Hello and welcome to Genoa in northwestern Italy, a city rich in maritime heritage and history. We're here to find out how the cruise industry is working to reduce its environmental footprint, charting a more sustainable future. Genoa is a favourite on Europe's cruise map. Passenger movements reached 1.7 million last year. The latest cruise liners are also built here. The industry says it's focusing on more efficient ships powered by alternative fuels as it pursues net zero carbon cruising by 2050. For the shipping industry, but we could say the same for any type of industry, there are not technologies or uh, accessibility to alternative fuels that can drive us to the zero emission. So for us, the challenge is working, investing and innovating in order to achieve that goal. Our role is to, first of all, to test and demonstrate that this alternative fuel can be part of our transition to the zero emission goal and uh, to work in order to create uh, the supply chain. Last year, the cruise ship MSC Euribia completed what's described as the industry's first net zero greenhouse gas emissions voyage. Operator MSC Cruises brought in 400 tonnes of bio liquefied natural gas for what was a symbolic moment for the sector. The cruise industry is also pursuing batteries and fuel cells. This laboratory is run by technology company EcoSpray and the University of Genoa. Here the focus is on fuel cells which could capture up to 90% of a cruise ship's carbon emissions and generate energy. They are trying different cells configuration, different materials and they are trying to find the best way to mass produce in an industrial way those uh, molten carbonate fuel cells. We believe uh, that uh, this kind of technology is one of the most suitable, if not the most suitable, for the passenger ships, uh, especially then for, for the cruise ships. On board cruise ships, waste is being converted to energy. And in ports like Genoa, shoreside electricity is being installed. Cruise liners can plug in while berth, meaning engines can be cut. All the EU's main ports must provide this by 2030. Shoreside electricity is obviously good to cut our emissions, but it is also for us one of the essential elements to work with the destination and make sure that cruise tourism is sustainable tourism. The EU is targeting emission cuts across the maritime sector. Last year, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen christened the world's first container ship that can run on methanol. EU regulation is seen as key to unlocking the alternative fuels. What is needed at the moment is to create demand from the industry so the investors can you know, put their money into production and make those fuels at scale. For that, we need to have governmental policy, we need to have regulations, and those regulations need to come at all levels at the national level, at the European level, as well as at the international level. In the EU, an emissions trading system is now covering large ships, putting a price on CO2 emissions. And as part of the Fuel EU Maritime Initiative, dependence on traditional fuels will be gradually reduced from 2025 onwards. The EU has probably the most comprehensive setup when it comes to regulatory requirements. What I would also like to see is that that framework that already pushes several companies to go ahead will not end up penalizing the front runners. They are the ones who are testing solutions. At the Italian Shipping Academy in Genoa, the next generation of maritime professionals are navigating the sustainability journey ahead harnessing digital technologies and also mastering new types of engines and fuels. The future of cruising is definitely with a vision of delivering of our net zero targets and being able to become the best way to discover the world sustainably.